Greetings from London. Uh, I'm Eden Collinsworth, the author of uh, What the Ermine Saw, and I thought I would tell you a bit about why, why I wrote the book. Uh, several years ago, I was in Krakow, Poland, and having an afternoon free, I decided to spend it at the Art Museum. I didn't really have a, an agenda, and I was perfectly happy kind of wafting from room to room until I uh, saw a deliberately darkened room, which was slightly forbidding. Um, and what, what was even more peculiar was um, uh, the fact that there was only one small painting uh, being exhibited um, in this deliberately darkened room, and it was flanked by two no-nonsense looking security guards. Uh, as astonishingly, it was a Leonardo da Vinci portrait uh, called Lady with an Ermine, and I, I was aware of the picture. I had no idea it was in Poland, and um, I, I was baffled as to how it, it, um, it got there. And so I started to do a bit of research and discovered that the 530 years uh, it took um, to arrive in that room, that the journey was so uh, remarkable, it, it, it cheated fiction. And so I decided to write a book about um, the journey uh, by way of its various owners. Um, some protected it from uh, destruction and um, a few of them had stolen it. Uh, one was notorious, Hans Frank, and um, he um, figures into the first page of the book, which I thought I would read, um, because it, it poses an interesting question. Hans Frank did not look Aryan, which is why he wasn't expected to be an outward-facing example of Hitler's conceived master race. Instead, he sat behind a desk in an office. Frank sat behind office desk after office desk until he rose in rank from Hitler's personal lawyer to the critically important role of overseeing the expansion of Germany's territorial base after its invasion of Poland in 1939. His position afforded him a desk in a grand and ancient building in the Polish city of Krakow, and on the wall behind him hung a small painting. As Hitler's deputy, Frank worked diligently on several fronts. He implemented the deportation of Polish citizens to make way for German colonization. He enslaved what was left of the Poles, and he did what he could to eradicate the Jews. Murdering at a furious pace while complaining that his hand ached from writing so many death warrants, Hans Frank supervised the wholesale extermination that would kill 20% of the Polish population. When he fled at the end of the war and Allied forces tracked him to his Bavarian vacation home, not far from where he stood waiting to be arrested was the small painting. So why would this coagulation of human evil, dead to shame but aware that he was facing his end, why would he refuse to be parted from an image of a beautiful young girl holding a white ermine? The young woman was Cecilia Gararena, um, and you'll have to read the book, I'm afraid, um, to learn about the significance of the ermine that she's holding. Uh, Cecilia was the mistress of Ludovico Sforza, who was the Duke of Milan. In uh, 1490, he commissioned Leonardo to paint her portrait. How it managed to survive the, um, the, the ensuing 200 years it went missing is anyone's guess, but ru the rumor was that in the 1580s, um, it was included in the collection of Emperor Rudolf of Bohemia, who, as you can see from his own portrait, was a um, seriously unconventional um, character. Uh, the portrait's next recorded owner was Isabel Czartoryska, who was a, a Polish princess. She, she established the first public museum in Poland in the 1790s. Um, I gather she also found time to enjoy men who she had seven children with seven different men and it happens that no one of them was her husband. When Poland was partitioned, um, she hid the portrait from the Russians by bricking it up in a wall. It was then exiled to Paris uh, and when it returned to Poland some 30 years later, it was buried in an outbuilding um, to keep it safe from uh, the um, advancing uh, Nazi army. Uh, there was a Polish housemaid by the name of Sophia Schmidt who risked her life to protect it. 
uh, the Gestapo found it, and um, Hitler decided to loan it to Hans Frank. After the war, it was sent to a depot in Munich. It was then transported to Poland, and because it was deemed bourgeois, it was warehoused under the st in Stalin's uh, communist reign. It was seen for the first time in the West at the end of the Cold War. In uh, 2016, the Czartoryski Foundation made a donation of it to the Polish nation at a, a fraction of its worth. It hangs in the National Museum in Krakow, and it is considered priceless. Since I read the first page of the book, I think it only fair that I read its last paragraph. For over five centuries, Lady with an Ermine has endured a long and fractured journey of loss and relocation. It has managed to make its way across borders while nations and governments have risen and fallen, while fortunes have been built and squandered, while wars have been won and lost, while begrudging political collaborations have been agreed to and then often ignored, while plagues have ravished, while secrets have been hidden and betrayals have been revealed, while everyone has their own reasons for sorrow and joy, while there has been, as there always will be, honor, deceit, and the countless contradictions of humanity. But there is a single certainty in the here and now. It is that while the past has abolished much of Leonardo's work, Cecilia and her white ermine continue to prove their steadfast relationship with time by holding our imagination. And shouldn't that be enough? <laughs>